So thank you for the invitation. That's really nice. I walked yesterday around the city. It's beautiful. I mean, you're lucky to live here. <laughs> Prague is nice, but, but we don't have sea. That's, that's, <laughs> that's the difference, I guess. So I just want to put my talk in a context, a broader context. So this is, this is pre-modern splicing. You have two exon introns. Just a brief you know, intro. And then you have five so-called small nuclear, ribonuclear protein particles, or SNRPs, U1, U2, 4, 5, and 6. And each of them have a different role. You know, U1 and U2, they define the intron, then the tri -SNRP comes, and then they form the active spliceosome, which actually cuts out the intron and join the exons. What I would like to talk today is about are those beautiful particles. This is the tri -SNRP. I'll talk mainly about all of them. And you can see that they, how beautiful they are, and it's that it's not easy actually to assemble them. There are, you know, more than 20 proteins, I think 30 proteins in this particle and three different RNAs. And you have to put them together in a stepwise manner. And actually, cells control many steps during the assembly. And I will talk today about the final control and how we think the control is happening. And then what's what happens when the, the formation is not correct. So this is just a brief animation of how the SNRP assembly, how we feel it's happening. So this is an siRNA transcribed by RNA polymerase 2. Then it leaves to the cytoplasm where it interacts with the SMN complex, which puts the ring of 7SM protein on RNA, and it's believed that the ring stays with RNA throughout the whole life. It's like a wedding ring of RNA, you know, you cannot remove it. Well, <laughs> I can. <laughs> <laughs> and then, then the cap, you know, the monometal cap is trimetallate, creating very specific structure, the, you know, 227 trimetal cap, which is really specific for those small nuclear RNAs, the species of mesonRNAs. And after that, this core SNRNP, RNA with SM ring, moves back to the nucleus where it first appears in the Cajal body. It's a non-membrane structure in the nucleus. I'll talk about it briefly. And then the SNRP-specific proteins are added, and the SNRP is ready for splicing in the nucleoplasm. Okay, so that's the kind of basic of the SNRP assembly. We and others also show that the tri-SNRP gets assembled in the Cajal bodies. So this is a cell nucleus of HeLa cells stained for SM proteins. So this is the ring, those are the ring proteins. And you see many little dots here, which we believe are the site of transcription and splicing. And then these two bright dots are the Cajal bodies. OK, so the SNRPs really concentrate in them. And the disnerp and trisnerp assembled there as well. This is just a brief you know, intro to the, what the Cajal body is. So this is actually an original drawing from the Spanish cytologist Ramani Cajal. And these are hamster neurons, and he stained them with silver. And he got those beauty, you know, he saw nucleoli, but he also saw this really dark structures, which he called the accessory bodies. And then they've forgotten. That he just described them, and they've forgotten for many years. And then people started using electron microscope. And look any, on anything they can look at, and they discover those, you know, nuclear bodies that look kind of like a thread or coil. So they named them coiled bodies. That was in the 60s, and then in the early 90s, actually Ivan Rushka, he was my PhD supervisor, but he did that before that. He went to California and he discovered coiling, which very specifically stained the Cajal bodies, and he cloned it, and we have a marker of Cajal bodies in them. It's it's the coiling, and I will use coiling in my talk as the marker of the Cajal bodies. And this is kind of the recent development. So this is a super resolution image of the Cajal body. It's coiling labeling. You can kind of see that we see a similar structure now with a fluorescent microscopy, where you know what you see kind of the mesh-like structure inside the Cajal body. So, and so and I hope it's going to work. So, yep. so these are the Cajal bodies. These are cells, HeLa cells stained for for coil in GFP, and these you know, two cells and these two cells are right after mitosis. So you can see that there are no Cajal body there, and I just want to demonstrate how dynamic structure they are 
You can see how they appear here. Many of, you know, few of them and the diffuse. And these cells just, you know, went through mitosis and again, the several cahal bodies and they are moving around and eventually they fuse. Just to give you an, you know, flavor what the cahal body is, how they look and how they behave in, in living cells. And now this is my talk, it's gonna have kind of three parts. First part which was published is about the quality control of SNRP assembly in the cahal body. Second part is what targets actually those core SNPs to the cahal body and we think that this targeting signal is essential for the quality control. And the last part will be about the assembly of the SNRP specific proteins in the cytoplasm and also partially about the quality control, what's happening when this assembly goes wrong. So this is the first part, and it was done by my PhD student, Ivan Novotny. This is kind of a cartoon of U5 SNRP, okay? This is RNA, this is the assembly and several SNRP-specific proteins. And he deleted one of those proteins, this big one, PRPF8. It's the huge protein, 20, 220 kilodaltons, and it's basically central for the assembly. Because when he deleted that, the other proteins didn't bind as well. These two big proteins are gone. This is gone as well. So what we have is basically just the core U5 and a SM ring particle. And then he did in situ hybridization. So this is just a control. These are again HeLa cells, DAPI, coilin, cajal bodies. And this is U4 in situ hybridization, U5 and U6. Okay. So that's how they look under normal situation throughout the nucleus and in cajal bodies. And when he inhibited, you know, deleted this big protein, basically, you know, leaving only the core particle there, you can see that all three particles basically accumulated and were sequestered in the cajal bodies. So what was actually happening? So he blocked formation of this particle. So this particle didn't have a partner. So basically he blocked this step as well. So the trisnerb didn't form. So that and that faulty particle got all accumulated in the cajal bodies. And we did more of the, you know, I don't want to go through all of that, but we deleted several proteins which are essential for different steps of SNR, of trisnerb assembly. So that would be the wall type situation. We get some concentration of these particles in the cajal body. And then when you see a bigger particle, those assembly intermediates. When we block that step, all three got uh, accumulated. When we block that step only, U5 was normal. It was not detected, but the Dysner was heavily sequestered in the Cajal body. And when we block maturation of the U6 and U4, U4, U6, the U4 got really accumulated in the Cajal body, while U5 was normal and it was not detected. On top of that, I have to admit that the Cajal body is not an essential structure. It's, not, it's found in many cells, in, in basically in all cancer cells. You can find it in embryonic tissues. You find it in neurons. But you don't find it in primary fibroblasts. These are the primary fibroblasts in for coiling. And for a long time, you know, people, when we had a lecture on cajal bodies, how important it is, they said, well, you don't need a cajal body. It's not essential, so pff, why do you work on it? And so what was actually, we got lucky because when we inhibited SNRP assembly, these are the same knockdowns I showed you before. And these, you know, they are identical cells. And, you know, you see how beautiful cajal bodies were formed there. So this kind of tells us that the cajal body is kind of a place where immature SNRP accumulate. Okay, they can trigger. So... What we did here, we increased concentration of incomplete SNRNPs. And that increased concentration of SNRNPs triggered formation of the cajal bodies. So it tells probably in the heavily metabolically active cells like neurons or cancer cells, there's a bigger disbalance in SNRNP assembly and disassembly shifted to disassembled SNRPs and those disassembled SNRPs can trigger formation of the cajal bodies, and that's why we see them in metabolically active cells. Yeah, just to show you that those new cajal bodies really contain the, the SNRNPs. Yeah. So 
what we think is this kind of a you know, little summary when the SNRP assembly doesn't proceed correctly, those immature SNRNPs are sequestered in the Cajal body. So the, in the next project, we asked why. How do cells discriminate between the mature and immature SNRPs? Okay. What is the molecular mechanism of the, more, of the distinguishing these two mature and immature? And that's a project which was started by Adriana Novotna, uh, Rechova, I'm sorry, uh, another PhD student in my lab. And she did a completely different approach. She transcribes SNRNAs in vitro and she fluorescently labels them. So those RNAs are fluorescently labeled. And then she used a needle here to inject those RNAs into, into cells. And she co-injects it with dextran, which is huge. It's 70 kilodalton dextran, which is also fluorescently labeled. And dextran is big enough so it doesn't cross the nuclear membrane. So here she injected to the cytoplasm, and the dextran stayed in the cytoplasm. Here the injection was into the nucleus. Okay, so we can monitor where we inject cells in the cytoplasm or the nucleus. And that's kind of a typical experiment where you know, she injected either the cytoplasm or the nucleus, U2 wall type RNA, and you can see it nicely went to the Cajal bodies. So that's kind of a summary. So what we think is happening that this SM ring assembled in the cytoplasm targets the whole particle to the Cajal body. And then it has to be bound by something. And we, it was published a long time ago by Greg Matera that coiling, I told you before, coiling is a marker of Cajal bodies, is able to bind the SM proteins. So what we think is now happening, and we have some evidence that other proteins are three involved, but that coiling is able to interact with a naked SM ring. When the SM ring is naked, this new core RNA is imported there. The coiling interacts. And coilin interacts with this particle as long as it's not bound by the proteins, but specific proteins. Okay? When the specific proteins bind, the, they outcompete coilin, and that releases the anchor. And this is the quality control mechanism how cells are able to discriminate between immature and mature SNRPs. That's the availability of the SM ring by the coiling. Because those particles are not holed in the Cajal body anymore, and they can leave. Okay, so that's the molecular mechanism, how cells are able to discriminate between immature and mature. And basically, this is the final control step of the SNRP assembly. When the, when the protein, you know, SNRP-specific protein are added, the cell says, okay, this is okay, and that you can go and act in splicing. And the last part is about the assembly of those SNRP-specific proteins. Okay, they are translated in the cytoplasm, and they are huge, really 200 kilodaltons. They are big proteins. So they have to get some assembly machinery that helps them to assemble. And this project was carried out by another PhD student, Anna Malinova. So, and again, this is the U5 particle. I hope you appreciate how I keep the color code, the green and green. <laughs> so, and I'll talk about the protein PRPF8 here. And this is connected to the disease. So this is, again, Ramon Cajal. I hope I appreciate how I keep the names the same. <laughs> he discovered the Cajal bodies, but he also... He got a Nobel Prize with Golgi, I think, for a neuronal study. So this is his original drawing of retina. Okay, the light is coming from the bottom to top. And here are the photoreceptors, the top. And that would be a, a light microscopy picture of retina. And there are about 70 genes which are mutated, and they cause the loss of this rod and cones. In general, it's called retinous pigmentosa because those patients have deposits of pigment, you know, on, on their retina. So that's, that's a diagnostic mode of retinous pigmentosa. And usually they lose the, the receptors 
at the outer part first, so they first lose, they, in a peripheral vision, they have so-called tunnel vision, so you can, you know, you look at it like that. And then they can eventually lose the vision totally. Basically, all but six of those 70 described genes are specifically expressed in retina cells. They're important for signal transduction, structure of retina cells, metabolism of retina cells, or whatever. However, there are six genes which are, in, which are mutated, causing retinous pigmentosa, and the genes are SNRNP proteins. SNRPs, splicing. Every single cell except erythrocytes needs splicing. And still the mutations have very specific phenotype target on the retina cells. And that's something we don't understand. Okay? And three of those genes are actually found in the U5 SNRP, PRPF6, SNRNP200, and PRPF8. And we published a couple of years ago that the mutation in SNRNP200, it's a helicase, affects the fidelity of the splicing. And today I would like to talk about what are the mutations doing to PRPF8. So the all mutations cluster, this is PRPF8, huge protein. And the all mutation cluster in this last c terminal domain, which interacts with BER2 or SNR, is the helicase. Okay, so these are the mutations on the structure, how they are. So this is the tail, which is inserted. So this is the active part of the helicase, and this tail is inserted inside and physically inhibits the helicase activity. So I promised that was this last slide. So this is kind of a summary. What I told you today about was that there's a quality control of SNRNP assembly and the final steps, the assembly of snr specific proteins and RNA. And if that's not happening, the RNA is sequestered in the cachal body. I showed you that the RNA is targeted to the cachal body by this ring of seven SM proteins and pro, you know, to, presented a hypothesis that the interaction of coiling with this bare or naked SM ring is the Merkel mechanism that discriminates between mature and mature SNRPs. And the last part, I told you something about the, you know, how this SNRMP specific proteins get assembled. What is the machinery involved in that assembly? And how mutations in, you know, in retinous pigmentosa patients inhibit the SNRNP assembly. And that's all. I would like to thank people who did the work. There was Anna Malinova did the retinous pigmentosa mutations. Adriana did the microinjection. And Ivan Novotny, he already left the lab. So he did the first quality control in Cajal bodies. And I would like to thank you for your attention.